Hey folks, how's everyone doing? Good, there we go, there we go, there we go. I guess fair warning for those of you that aren't familiar with the Avid Exchange culture, we're gonna be doing a lot of applauding, is that cool? Yeah. Okay, yes, <laughs> see, get used to it. Get used to it, shake it out. Hey, we're going live on Twitter, so welcome our Twitter folks. Hey, everyone on Twitter, more applauding, yes. All right, I'll stop it, I'll stop it. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Chris Elmore. I have the distinction of being the very first employee for Avid Exchange a long time ago, and I've held a job pretty well, Mike, wouldn't you agree? All right, moving on, moving on, <laughs> fabulous. Yeah, so anyway, um, a couple of things about today. First of all, we're real excited because today is, you know, it, it marks a pretty uh, great day in Avid Exchange history. It's the day that we're going to cut the ribbon and we're going to celebrate the opening of our Sandy, Avid Exchange's Sandy, Utah uh, location. Isn't that great? Who's excited about that? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one thing real quick, I'd like to recognize Lynn Shimano. Lynn, she, he's up here. He's a pretty big deal, too. And he was the one that suggested that I MC this event. So if I say anything stupid, it's totally on Lynn. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. So anyway, just a little bit, of, uh, little bit about the agenda. We're going to have uh, four speakers today. We're going to hear from our own uh, Chief Operating Officer, Steve Boehm. We're also going to hear from uh, Sandy's own mayor, Kurt Bradburn, yes, and, and you got applause from that. Look at that, a mayor applauding himself. We're obviously going to get along, sir. We're cut from the same cloth. And we're going to hear from John Notwell, and uh, then uh, Mike Prager, our CEO, is going to kind of wind it up for us. After that, what's going to happen is we're going to come, we're going to stay right here. We're going to cut the ribbon. You know what? I did a little research on ribbon cutting, by the way. You know, ribbon cutting symbolizes starting new, starting fresh, which is what we're doing today. We're, we're, we're starting brand new. They also have, you know, like um, groundbreakings for brand new buildings. But Utah, I'll look at the mayor on this one. Utah has a really distinct one that I think we really missed the boat on this, is the golden spike. Yeah, yeah we probably should have done that. <laughs> we really missed out. I mean, right here, and we'd have a spike there. All right, moving on. So our own Golden Spike, first up to the microphone, I um, uh, want to welcome uh, our Chief Operating Officer. He's, he's had a, f a phenomenal career at eBay. He's been in the payments uh, uh, business for a long time, and he's helped since coming to Avid Exchange. He's helped us create really dynamic, scalable growth around our customers and our vendors and how they interact. So a very warm welcome to our Chief Operating Officer, Steve Boehm. Steve. <laughs> I've been called a lot of things, but never a golden spike. Uh, good day, everyone, and welcome. Uh, before I get started, I just want to acknowledge, recognize, and thank some of our guests here today. So bear with me just a second. Sander, excuse me, Sandy Mayor Kurt Bradburn, uh, Economic Development Director Nick Dirksen, President and CEO of the Utah Technology Council and State Representative John Notwell. Uh, members of the Utah Tech Council, representatives of the City of Sandy and the Chamber of Commerce, representatives from Silicon Slopes, and last but not least, my fellow Avid Xers. Uh, that's as close to a gratuitous applause line as you're going to get from me. I joined Avid about a year and a half ago because I wanted to be a part of creating something great. Eighteen years ago, in a small brick warehouse in Charlotte, North Carolina, Mike Prager and a small team of pioneers, including our own Chris Elmore, set forth on a journey to do just that. The incredible efforts of those people, the bets they made, the successes and failures they experienced, they're the reasons for our company's past success and why we're here today. Abbott is now nearly a company of nearly 1,200 people. We've become more sophisticated, serving more customers in more locations than Mike or Chris or any of that early team could have imagined. But we're still committed to the same principles that served us well back then. Our values focus on being passionate about our customer success and on our teammates having a blast. Because if people enjoy what they do every day, our customers feel it and our customers love what we do for them. We actively engage in the communities that we serve, and we're really very excited about expanding the work we do in that regard here in our beautiful new home in Sandy Towers. This place will be the avid west home for years to come. 
Now, this isn't the first time I've had a chance to do business, uh, expand business in Utah. Back in 2013, when I worked for a, a, another small e-commerce company down the road a ways, uh, I had a chance to work with Governor Herbert, the Economic uh, Development Agency, then led by uh, Spencer Eccles and uh, City of Draper officials. I had a chance to uh, understand the make things happen spirit that exists in the Valley. And although the scale of our adventure here may be slightly different than that prior one, the underlying rationale is exactly the same thing. When you want to build a sustainably great company, one that has a truly human culture, and one that aims to be customers' most trusted partner, and that is our objective, it all begins and ends with people. Finding and attracting great people is the central pillar to success in any business, and certainly in a technology-enabled service business. Now, we know we have our work cut out for us here. Um, we have to uh, attract great people who have lots of other options up and down the, the freeway here. And we understand that our brand is not widely known. Not widely known, not yet, anyway. But we believe by focusing on being a great place to work, we can earn the rec reputation and the respect that's essential if we are to become one of Utah's truly great next technology companies. That is our aim, and that is our responsibility. So on behalf of my uh, Avid X teammates throughout the country, I'm honored to be here at the beginning of the next phase of this exciting journey. And before turning the podium back over to Chris, I'm pleased to share with you a video that illustrates just a bit more about your new neighbors here in Sandy. So thanks very much, and let's roll the video. Having Avid Exchange here is a huge win for Sandy. Uh, this is exactly the type of corporate client we want to bring in, someone that will help us pioneer all the different initiatives that we're rolling out as a city. That's something that, that excites me greatly as a mayor. We're starting to step up in the various organizations and lead more. There's an opportunity for us to do more and leverage more and share our story and help others. So it's really, it's fulfilling. I'm even getting, getting goosebumps talking about it. When you think about Avid Exchange growing here to Utah, what you see is continued solidification that Utah is one of the best places to do business. You can see that the tech community here continues to, to boom and to blossom. And we're really happy that Avid Exchange has decided to come here to Utah and grow part of its business here. Well, I'm a big proponent of allowing our individuals to grow and for the business to grow, that creates more opportunity. So coming together, we've been very successful in promoting a number of individuals as well as allowing other individuals to grow their careers and in some areas. Being part of the Avid family, everyone has so much more opportunity now. Utah is a place of pioneers. And for the people that are here, as they continue to be inventive and seek out new things, uh, and the same for Avid Exchange as a business, uh, connect with the community, uh, connect with that pioneering spirit that has made Utah what it is today. That's great. That's awesome. I, I, I think we do need to mention that the gentleman who did the role in shot, he has significant military training. So don't, don't try that at uh, your office anyway. So uh, next we're gonna have, we're gonna hear from Sandy's own mayor here. The couple of things, there was a little bit of controversy trying to do a little bit about your background. Uh, one, we had trouble finding out what the, where the name Sandy came from. So I don't know if you wanna clear that up and two, was really the more important one, was how tall actually are you? So um, that's, uh, okay, so this is your fault, Lynn, by the way. So, but uh, we do know that um, Sandy's own mayor is, is, uh, is passionate about three things, friends, family, and community. And um, you also worked uh, as an attorney for the state of Utah, but I think one of the most important things about, that I found out about you is that 
the previous mayor had the seat for 24 years and you came in and did a little disrupting. So, you know, that does an avid exchanger's heart some good. <laughs> so I want to welcome to the podium uh, Mayor Kurt Bradburn. Thank you. Yeah, so keep clapping. This is good. I don't know a politician that doesn't love a good applause. So how about one more? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, why don't we stir some controversy? Yeah, so uh, I think I'm, I'm, in my head, I'm, I'm like 6'8", but I think on, on paper, I'm 6'4". But yeah, we did replace the last mayor who'd been here for 24 years. Um, so I'm, I'm a big believer in, uh, in, in change, in disrupting, in innovating. And so this is just a contagious place to be, to be honest. I, I feel like Lynn and I are on a first date in this video. We're overlooking the valley. We're laughing. We're talking. Uh, that probably wasn't the most appropriate thing to say to our live folks out there. But uh, uh, you know, in the spirit of controversy, well, I'll just keep talking. So, um, but uh, no, I the, you know I spent some time here with with you all, uh, the early people that came out, I guess, ahead of time, or people that were already here, but. Uh, beyond just the Nerf Wars, I mean, it's just a, it's a great place to be. You collaborate with each other, there's great ideas, you're obviously innovating and disrupting an industry, and so um, I think we need more of this all around in Sandy. This is a, a contagious vibe, and we want to just see it grow and develop. So uh, this is a great uh, day for Sandy. Um, you're, what you all do is exactly what we want to be about in Sandy. We want uh, you, you talked about attracting great people to your organization. We want to do the same. We want to attract great residents here. We want to attract great businesses here. Uh, and the way to do that is to, is to innovate, find ways to do things better, faster, cheaper, smarter, uh, you name it. And so that's, that's what I want to be about. And we look to great corporate clients like you uh, to set the example for us. Uh, and our, it, it's going to be a great opportunity for our residents who are looking for great jobs. Um, and so we just thank you for wanting to be a part of Sandy. Uh, so to address the name, I think it's fairly clear. Anybody who's done construction around Sandy, you can see the giant uh, sand pit behind us. But we are sort of at the bottom of a uh, what used to be a lake. So it is quite a sandy area here. I believe that's where the name came from. Uh, if not, OK, well, let's great. Let's just, uh, well. I, and, and instead of making me look bad, let's just roll with that. Uh, uh, that yeah. I don't know what the history book said, but we're going to change history. So, um, but we also just encourage you. We really want to partner with all of our, uh, both our residents and our our uh, our corporate residents. And so, anything that you want to be a part of, we would love to partner with you. We have great. This is a great community to be involved in. We have great events, um, and uh, we would love to uh, to. Um, put your face forward as uh, one of our most valued uh, corporate clients and residents. So thank you again on behalf of Sandy for choosing us, and, uh, and let's get to work. So thank you. Not, not, hang on a sec. There we go. All right. So um, I've heard, that, I mean, it's obvious. It's Sandy. I, I, I don't try to overthink things, but... There was a, a notion that it was named after a train driver, Sandy. We heard that this morning. And then on the uh, shuttle over here, the shuttle driver said it was named after the character in the movie Grease. So, <laughs> sorry, Lynn. So next up, um, next speaker, we have a tech veteran. And he's been instrumental in businesses, uh, RizPoint and, and uh, Workfront and in contract. But today, he is the uh, CEO of uh, probably the most influential tech um, organization in Utah called the Utah Tech Council. So I want to welcome to the microphone uh, John Notwell. <laughs> there we go. Well, Steve, Mike, thanks for giving me a chance to come up here and say a few words. Um, Chris, I, I admit I have beard envy. I don't, I, it's, I don't know if you have to comb it or I, I love it. I love it. Uh, Mayor, uh, you know, it's good to share the stage with you for a minute. I have a special connection to Sandy. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I met my wife on a blind date here and uh, here in, the, in Sandy and my in-laws still live here today. We're in Sandy every week, so it's good to be here with you. Uh, just briefly, I imagine some of you might wonder why am I here. Um, 
So I have two roles uh, in Utah. I'm a member of the Utah House of Representatives representing the southwest part of South Lake County, which is Harriman, Riverton, and, and South Jordan. Uh, I've been pleased to represent my area for six years. And uh, in addition, for the past 10 months, I've been the president and CEO of the Utah Technology Council. Uh, after 12 years working in this community and watching it blossom and grow from uh, very few companies to now, uh, we'll talk about this in a sec, but 6,500 companies in Utah in the tech community. So we're, we're growing very, very fast. Uh, I think, you know, I, I, do this, I do this a bunch, cutting ribbons, you know, for folks that are opening up new facilities, but this is special. Um, there's a vibe here, a feeling here, a culture here. Uh, you, know, you, don't, you don't grow to 1,200 employees without having a strong culture and a strong vision, and I applaud your leadership and all of you for contributing um, to that. Utah's a young state, uh, both in modern history, but also in demographics. We were often considered the frontier. Uh, we're, we were a territory of the wild, wild west, of bandits, of hideouts and hideaways, uh, and also of discovery. Uh, intimid uh, intimidating terrain threatened the lives of people um, as they explored from Salt Lake to all the corners of the state, but they overcame those obstacles and those risks, and those pathways created these burgeoning communities that we see all over Utah today that are forming one of the fastest growing economies in the world, actually. In the rotunda of our beautiful state capitol, if you haven't been up there, I encourage you to take some time to tour our capitol building. In the rotunda, there are four large niches, and in those niches are huge bronze statues. And we call them the Great Utahs. They represent our highest ideals and our highest visions. They have names. They're our, our biggest visions, I should say. They have names you might recognize, like arts and education and naturalization and immigration. One of them is called science and technology. And on science and technology, you have a large uh, a mentor, an older mentor. His name is Science. And he holds in his hand a telescope that he's lifted heavenward, giving us this idea back to the days of Copernicus and Galileo when man looked heavenward for answers to its greatest questions. And at his feet is his young apprentice, a young boy named Technology. And Technology holds in his hand one of the greatest inventions of all time, the wheel. This to me has always been one of the reasons why Utah has been so invested in science and technology from our earliest days when you saw companies like WordPerfect and Novell all the way to our great unicorns today, many of which are going public. It's an exciting time to be in technology in Utah, but it's also an exciting time for companies that are coming here. And I think one of the reasons why Avid Exchange looks to Utah is similar to many of the other companies that have expanded, grown, started here, or even relocated to Utah. We have a high quality of life, a reasonable cost of living. We have a regulatory environment here that says, hey, get out of the way, let the risk takers and the innovators continue to build a better mousetrap and let government get out of the way of those mousetraps. Let me just be one of the many who are congratulating you and welcoming you coming to Utah. It's an exciting time to be here. 6,500 technology companies in Utah and 135,000 technology workers. We are growing at the fastest rate of any tech economy in the country. And I think largely it's because of people like you because you continue to make an investment in the community, you continue to, to come here to talk about what makes Utah so great. So thank you. Let me just join in the chorus and say welcome to your new home. Good luck and congratulations on your great fortune. That was awesome. All right, so last speaker. You ready, Mike? Oh, he's ready. This is the great thing is I was given a script to follow and then it gets to the script here and it says, Chris, for Mike's introduction, it says, Chris, I'll leave this up to you since you know him so well. <laughs> oh, man, he's nervous. Uh, let me do this. Now, I'm going to tell, tell, tell you something about Mike that most people don't know. He's nervous about this. Is that? Very nervous. Uh, yeah, but wait. It's good. Don't worry. I, I, I told, asked my wife. She, uh, so Mike, Mike has been an incredibly successful entrepreneur since about the sophomore year in college, and he took that opportunity and he spun that to a new opportunity, which he spun to a new opportunity, which he spun to a new opportunity, which he spun to Avid Exchange. 
And I think that's one of the most remarkable things about our next speaker is that every time he, he reaches a goal that's always significant in other people's eyes, he resets that goal and he sets even a bigger one. So I think one of the things I admire most about him, and I'm happy to say I've worked for him for 20 years. So the greatest entrepreneur ever, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Prager, CEO. <laughs> Yeah, so I was kind of nervous. Uh, I one thing you know about working with Chris, we've worked together for a long time, I never have any idea what he's going to say. So uh, that usually keeps it interesting. Um, so uh, first of all, um, yes, I was part of a team that uh, um, founded Avid Exchange, uh, you know, it was 18 years ago, and being kind of pioneers of growing the team and uh, developing um, in the city of Charlotte and how we expanded. Um, you know, we kind of had that pioneering mentality, and so when think of, um, you know, expanding outside of Charlotte um, and uh, thinking about, you know, kind of being a pioneer, um, you know, we're with, uh, you know, uh, the state of Utah and Sandy in terms of being pioneers, and, uh, um, and certainly you can tell by our Nerf gun wards, we love the Wild West. Um, <laughs> only thing, thank God we didn't shoot the mayor. <laughs> so that could have been a bad start to the relationship. Uh, but uh, so first of all, so why expand outside of Charlotte? Um, we have a big team there and have done great things, but you know, why have a significant presence someplace outside of Charlotte? And so I think it kind of is, there's really four key reasons. One is, um, you know, we need to have redundant operations, uh, business continuity, and um, you know, across you know, the, uh, the sphere of where we serve customers. And today, uh, we serve customers in all 50 states, uh, in all regions of the country. And to be able to best support customers and making sure um, if something bad happens in one of our locations from a you know, hurricane to some other natural disaster, uh, we have you know, people and redundant operations to serve customers in other places. Um, so that's first. Uh, the second is access to talent. Um, you know, uh, the world's a big place. The U.S. is a, is a big place of um, um, a great talent. And um, we need great talent wherever we have our, um, our presence to support customers. And there's no shortage of great talent, uh, you know, that we can absorb at Avid Exchange. And this is a great example of how we can grow our talent base. Uh, the third is around, uh, you know, support of corporate customers and really kind of extending kind of how we support them, the hours of operation. Certainly, um, you know, supporting the whole country from the East Coast uh, isn't ideal. And to be able to have a West Coast leverage point, uh, how we support customers is, um, is high in the list. Um, and then lastly, uh, with that is partners. Um, and uh, we um, have, you know, several significant partners that have significant operations here in the West. Uh, a couple of them uh, are here today. Um, you know, NetSuite and uh, our partnership. I know we have Regu from NetSuite that's here, um, and that's awesome. Um, in terms of, you know, how do we best support, um, you know, whether it be NetSuite or other partners, MasterCard and how they're bringing our products to all issuing banks. Um, and guess what? You know, about, you know, a half the issuing banks um, are in the western part of the country. And so um, those are some core reasons why, you know, looking to expand outside of Charlotte. Um, but, the, you know, the real reason, so why pick Sandy, Utah? Um, and I think it starts by uh, the acquisition that we did um, now in uh, 2014, a company called Puracle that we um, acquired. And uh, Puracle had been around for uh, a long time. Um, I learned today is actually 27 plus years. Um, that was really led by Lynn Shimada, John Hanasek, and uh, we saw it as a great uh, cornerstone to be part of the Avid family in 2014 as really a leverage point of, um, at the time, we were focused on how it extended our products and how it got us into new vertical markets like construction. Um, but what we didn't realize at the time, that it was really served as a catalyst to how we think about um, being um, outside of Charlotte in terms of redundancy, supporting customers, and using uh, the Pirico office as a launch point to have a larger presence on the West, um, or the Wild West, as I'll now refer to it. Um, so um, Sandy's uh, been, you know, kind of a, a great community for us to select, uh, you know, this location. Um, and, you know, the other thing that, you know, I find uh, interesting and part of being, um, you know, in Utah and particularly Sandy is there's so many correlations to Charlotte. Um, I think the people are very similar from the standpoint of there's more to it than just um, 
you know, the work aspect of it. Uh, people have a work-life balance attitude. Um, they're, you know, in Charlotte for typically, you know, other reasons. They're in, uh, you know, Sandy and Utah, you know, for other reasons. They love the outdoors. They love the mountains. They love skiing. Uh, in Charlotte, they love, you know, access to the beaches and, uh, you know, the weather and the lifestyle. And so there's a lot of you know, similarities between the two cultures. Um, and not to mention, um, being a guy that's from the Midwest and being in Wisconsin, I love friendly people. And uh, I don't think you get, you know, any more friendly people between Charlotte and Sandy, Utah. So uh, I love that aspect of it. Um, and then I'll, um, I do have to confess, um, um, the third is my uh, personal migration of skiing. Uh, so I started out skiing on, we didn't have mountains in Wisconsin, so they were kind of like hills. Um, you know, kind of, uh, you stacked up a bunch of hay bales uh, during the summer, then when it snowed, it kind of formed these hills, right? Um, so that was my kind of uh, how I started skiing. And then I was in Boston, and I had, uh, you know, the great uh, privilege of mastering ice skiing. Um, you know, in New England, I was a great um, ice skier. Um, and then I was exposed to this thing called Utah snow. Um, and I have not gone back since. So uh, that's my kind of, uh, you know, journey of skiing. And uh, I think, um, you know, it's all a catalyst to say we love being here. Um, we love growing the team. We had, uh, had a kind of cornerstone of a great team that we um, uh, started with. I think since we've been here, since 2014, we've tripled the size of the team already. And as part of our commitment to, uh, you know, this location, the state of Utah and the Sandy, uh, we're going to spend about $35 million in uh, um, you know, almost double the team again in the second half of this year, um, this location. The good news is we have lots of room to expand and, um, and add another about 200 jobs over the next, uh, you know, several years. So I'm super excited and uh, thank you, Mayor, for making this happen and uh, John and the rest of the team. Um, and I must say, um, my teammates at Avid, you guys have been a great and uh, to be able to uh, pioneer where we are today um, and just make sure that when we have celebrities walk around the office like the mayor, we just don't shoot anybody, okay? Um, so with that, thank you guys for coming, and I'll turn it back to Chris. All right, so um, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and cut the ribbon, and we want to invite um, Steve and Lynn and the mayor and John up here, and also John Hanasek, if you're in the building, there he is. I think I got everybody. Mike, Steve, Mayor, John. Yep. Now nobody run with these. So this is kind of our equivalent, I think, of the gold spot. Yeah. All right. So I've never cut a ribbon before. Is there like a is there really a is there a voice? Is there a white tooth for it? Okay. Here, here. Why don't we do it? I'll start it. Lynn, why don't you continue it here? And let we'll let the mayor finish it off. Yeah. Okay, you ready for that applause? Yes. Yeah.